Okay, so I've got a little experimentation here where I'm going to actually go through and try and use Linux on a daily basis. That's right. Um, generally, I just use Linux um, kind of when I need to for server administration. And other than that, I really don't fool around with it. So I figure uh, if I want to go through and do more Linux videos, which I would love to, um, I really just got to kind of use it every day. So I use basically going to be three operating systems every day. We've got our Windows 7, uh, my main computer. Uh, of course, you can see I've got uh, Mac OS on my MacBook. And I'm actually going to install the Linux in a uh, partition on here. I'm going through and resizing my uh, hard drive now. It's only a 64 gig solid state. I'm tempted to go through and get a larger one to do this, but um, we'll see when time goes on if I really care to actually use the Linux at all. But uh, basically the first step is I gotta go through, resize the drive here, and I'm gonna update y'all as I go through and have problems or find something really cool or don't and um, you'll just get kind of video updates uh, I'm gonna try and put them up the same day I find the stuff or have the problem or whatever so it'll be kind of like a video log thing I guess you could call it so today I'm going to actually go through and install it I'm going to try and give it around 10 gigs should be enough because um, really all I do on this laptop is HTML editing um, on the road. So, and the other thing is uh, accessing database servers. So, I'm going to have to find a utility for accessing Microsoft SQL Server. So, we'll see. Uh, until then, I'll just update it as it goes along. We're shrinking the disk for the Mac OS partition, and we're going to create the uh, partition for that. The Linux we're going to install is going to be Ubuntu 10.04. I'm going to try and do the 64-bit. Um, I do believe this MacBook does support the proper 64-bit, uh, so we will see. Okay, so I have the uh, disk for 64-bit Ubuntu in the system here. And I've got it booting up off of the CD. Um, but I found a little interesting article here. Um, that basically tells me that even though I have Snow Leopard, I might not be able to do this uh, Linux in 64-bit. Um, my reasoning here is... Um, that yes, I have Snow Leopard, and Snow Leopard is capable for 64-bit, and I have an Intel Core 2 Duo, which is a 64-bit processor. But the problem seems, or that I suspect could be a problem, is that the EFI, which is basically the Macintosh BIOS, uh, is 32-bit. And you can get, you know, MacBooks with 64-bit ones, and they'll naturally boot up in 64-bit mode. But this one is 32-bit, this MacBook. So it might not run the 64-bit version of Ubuntu. I might have to go through and install 32-bit. Don't like the idea, but... Yeah, this is a older MacBook, and quite frankly, I really don't want to buy a new one because uh, they are expensive. So um, hopefully, if you guys go through and really want to see more Mac videos with newer hardware, um, <laughs> help me out with uh, um, my supporters. I'll say that. <clears throat> help me find supporters. Yeah, that's that's the way I'll word that. Um, I'm not condoning clicking on things. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to let it boot up off the disk here, and uh, we'll go from there. 
Alrighty. Well, so far so good. I went through the little um, initialization install wizard uh, after it booted up off the CD. It took it forever and a half to boot up, but seriously, Macs are horribly slow. At least these older MacBooks are horribly slow on booting up off a CD. So, no surprise there. You should see how long it takes to do a boot up off a, a Mac OS CD. Um, but yeah, I went through, did this little wizard, and it saw that I had Mac OS. It recognized that. I went ahead and told it just install to the largest contiguous free space. It did its thing. And from what I've heard, 10.04 is supposed to be really, really good. That's the latest release, of course. And um, it definitely, so far at least, the installer uh, looks a little bit better than it was before. It seems about the same, but I can see something's changed with it a little bit from what I remember off the top of my head. So um, we'll let it run on through here, copying files. And. Uh, grab myself some food. Well, I've gone through like I said got everything up and running and uh, decided to go ahead and I'm going to use the default email program evolution and I'm of course blocking out my actual email address with my finger but uh, it seems to have my inbox duplicated partly um, as you see I've got customers and then it doesn't have all my eBay stuff under one, but it's got some of the same stuff under the other, and I don't quite understand why it's doing that. And further, since I've got a Gmail service, I was wanting to go through and let synchronize my contacts. Haven't found a way to do that yet for my address book. So, um, don't know if it supports it or not, but we'll figure that out. As far as the HTML editor seems to be I can download something called Bluefish and uh, I've just got it open and I'll go through and fool around with that see how good it is but uh, so far so good and um, that's really all I have the report just gonna go through use it tonight see what all kind of issues I'm gonna have but uh, it seems to be doing uh, pretty good so far so uh, before, I was going to go through and use a program called uh, Bluefish Editor uh, for my HTML editing to replace uh, Dreamweaver, so to say, uh, for the Linux. And um, it seemed to work okay. You know how to use Bluefish along with uh, FileZilla, which I've used before on Mac and PC. No problem. Um, but first time using this Bluefish Editor and... I think I was actually using it for editing maybe about uh, two hours before I ran into some issue where it just completely rewrote uh, a chunk of my code, uh, Cold Fusion code actually, just completely rewrote um, an HTML tag and it just undid a bunch of work I had done. So, um, can't use that then. So, I decided to try good old Eclipse. It's a uh, product I've heard about before, went through, and as um, usual, just went through the Ubuntu Software Center, downloaded Eclipse, had an issue there. Um, apparently there's like some bug, I have to go through and actually manually run through the command prompt installation of, I uh, can't remember the name of the package, but uh, it's basically an add-on package for Eclipse, and enables a whole bunch of stuff in it. And for some reason, um, Ubuntu doesn't have it in it um, for it. I mean, it's part of it, but you have to go through and manually install it. And I think and it's maybe just a typo in a script or something for the installer, I guess. But I went through, did that, and I was able to go through and actually add add-ins, plugins for Eclipse. And Eclipse is really freaking awesome. I love it. It's actually um, probably one of the better editors I've used in a while um, just on a little bit I've used it yesterday I've already really started to like it so but uh, that's that's so far I did find something else out here and I'll actually show you this if I go and um, 
There we go. Uh, go ahead and try and get the Adobe Flash player. There's actually two of them. You see, I got Flash plugin installed. Uh, as far as I can tell, that's just an older version. Because, I mean, I go through, I get the details for it, doesn't really give me much as the results of that, but the Flash plugin 10, for some unknown reason, uh, is not available on 64 bit. Yes, I am running Ubuntu 10.04 um, in 64 bit. Um, so I'm actually surprised that it does it. Apparently, it just really doesn't check the EFI as far as its version, what it supports. But for some reason, I can't do the Flash plugin 10 because it tells me it doesn't work with AMD 64. I'm guessing that's something that's going to be fixed soon. Properties of it. See, it does say I have Flash Player 10. That's the thing. I don't understand why there's two of them in there. It, it's just, it's weird. But, um, let's see, what was the other issue I was having? Oh, yes. Um, I had to go through and turn off the horizontal scrolling. Um, with the mouse, I can go through and what the heck just happened to my Firefox? It just grayed out for some reason. Well, this is something new. Did it crash? Okay, that's something I haven't seen before, but, um... I'll figure that out later. You just saw something weird that I haven't seen. Um, but yeah, the horizontal scrolling, because i got a multi-touch trackpad here. And basically I can use two fingers, scroll up and down, and left and right. Uh, the problem is, its sensitivity to the left and right scrolling is very, very, like, finicky. So, I mean, if I just move my fingers, like, a, a smidge, it, it just scrolls a whole bunch and it's just bloody annoying so I'd actually turn that off and the other issue I have is the two finger touch see if I go through and do that that time it worked do it again I might be have actually adjusted to it but I literally have to hit like that time it didn't work didn't work that that time it did it it kinda sometimes works sometimes doesn't as far as I can tell it seems to be a timing issue of hitting both of the fingers at the same time. I mean exactly at like the same time. Uh, if I'm a little bit off it doesn't seem to uh, go through and actually give me my right click menu. Um, but other than that it seems fine and um, haven't had any other issues that I can think of. Um, I told you about the email issue I had. I still gotta go through and deal with that but um, that's it for this video on it. I'm going to go through, compile all these, upload it, and this isn't like to go through and bash Linux or anything like that, but this is really intended to be to show you um, issues that somebody would have in actually trying to convert from, you know, a PC to Linux or Mac to Linux or anything like that. Um, like I said, I've never really have bothered to make Linux a full-fledged system for myself because, uh, quite honestly, a lot of applications just weren't there that I needed or there were compatibility issues or drivers were just completely jacked up and everybody's been basically praising 10.04 up and down how good it is, so I figured, well, I'll give it a shot. Uh, last time I tried to do something like this was back in the day when like Red Hat 5 was <laughs> uh, the best thing out there. So give you an idea when I've really bothered to try and use Linux as a full system. So this video is really long and um, if you got any questions on it, something you'd like to see me try, any um, questions or solutions to any of the problems I've had so far, uh, feel free to post them below. And until next time, I'll 